Hi, Farmer Fred here, Fred Hoffman. You might remember me from the radio. Say, do you want your family to eat healthy year-round? Well, who doesn't? The healthiest, freshest foods are the fruits and vegetables that you grow yourself. And in our area, the 365-day vegetable garden is easy to achieve. And right now, midsummer, this is the time to be planting the seeds and transplants for the vegetables that your family will enjoy throughout the fall, winter, and the following spring. Ideally, most of this planting can be done during the milder months of September or October, and earlier too. Some of the vegetables you can be starting in mid-August from seed or transplant include broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, carrots, Swiss chard, cilantro, and leaf lettuce. The Sacramento County Master Gardeners have an excellent online vegetable planting schedule on their website. And don't forget their new gardening guide and calendar that's available now for 2022. I think. The winter garden bed should have many of the same characteristics as the summer garden. A sunny and level location close to the house, especially in the side of a kitchen window. You need a convenient water source and you need soil that drains easily. Because of possible heavy rains in winter, keep your fingers crossed, raised beds can solve that drainage problem for homeowners living with clay soil. Mix in other soil amendments such as compost and worm castings now and maybe top it off with two or three inches of mulch. That will improve crop production in the cold, wet days that await, we hope. For foothill gardeners, a raised bed with wooden sides has an added benefit. Those structures can support a hinged translucent top such as glass, polyethylene, or fiberglass. and That's an instant cold frame to protect winter vegetables from low temperatures or heavy wind and rain. Starting vegetables in the heat of the summer, especially from seed, requires a consistently moist seed bed until the plants are up and growing. Oh, you don't have a centralized irrigation control system for your fall garden area? Well, an automatic gardening water system includes drip irrigation tubing or soaker hoses that are hooked to a battery-operated timer that can attach to an outdoor faucet, and that can ease this entire process. Let's delve into the nutritious vegetables that you should be thinking about starting in your garden in the weeks ahead. So let's start our fall garden with some broccoli. It can be started from seed in pots in protected areas as early as July and then planted out in the garden in August. You can go out and buy transplants to plant in September, October, or November. If you're planting from seed, you could actually start seed again indoors in December and January and set out transplants in February for a spring crop. Now, it takes 60 to 90 days to get harvestable flower heads and stems, so be aware that if you are planting in February, you are risking the plant bolting and producing flowers if it gets too warm too quickly. Recommended varieties by the University of California include Green Comet, Premium Crop, Green Goliath, Green Duke, Green Valiant, Emperor, and Pac-Man. If you see holes in the leaves, the usual culprits in our area include cabbage loopers, snails, and slugs. Use BT to control the loopers. A mollicide with iron phosphate to control snails and slugs will work. How about some red and green cabbage? You know, here in the valley, cabbage does well when plants mature from late fall until early spring. If you're starting from seed, it takes about eight weeks before they're ready to be transplanted into the garden. So start those seeds in July or put out transplants of cabbage August through November. Early maturing varieties include Stonehead, Early Jersey Wakefield, Darkery, Golden Acre, and Copenhagen Market. Red cabbage varieties include Ruby Ball Hybrid and Redhead. Also try the Savoy Ace and the Savoy King cabbages. And it's best not to plant cabbage family crops, the coal crops such as cabbage, broccoli, and cauliflower, in the same spot year after year since diseases and insects pests will build up. So remember to rotate your crops. One of my favorite greens to grow year-round in our area is Swiss chard. It's actually a member of the beet family, but you won't find a beet-like root on it. It's the fleshy stalks and broad, crisp leaves that make fresh chard a year-round staple here. You can plant seeds or transplants of Swiss chard in most months. Really, the only months you need to leave out are the coldest and hottest months, and that would include June and July and December and January. The rest of the year, you're good to go with Swiss chard. For a summer crop, though, of Swiss chard, 
plant it where it will get afternoon shade in the coolest part of the garden. There are many great Swiss chard varieties. One of my favorites is Bright Lights with its colorful stalks. Other Swiss chard varieties worth trying include French White, Golden Sunrise, and Peppermint Stick. How about some kale? Kale is a member of the cabbage family, but it's more of a leafy vegetable instead of a head vegetable. The leaves are edible, and they can be quite pretty, too. In fact, ornamental kale with its brightly colored leaves are intensified by cold fall and winter nights. It makes a great bedding plant. The ornamental kale is used more as a garnish because of its, well, shall we say, bitter flavor. However, it's the green leaf varieties of kale that are the tastiest. One of the tastiest green varieties is an All-America Selections winner called Kale Prism F1. They're easy to maintain, almost seamless stalks. They're quick to grow new leaves for a continuous harvest throughout the colder months. Kale performs best when set out in full sun in early October through November. One vegetable that is tastiest as soon as it's picked are snow peas and sugar snap peas, and they can be directly sowed into the garden in August through early October. One trick to get them to germinate quicker is to soak them overnight in lukewarm water. Snow peas have edible pods and they are harvested while the peas inside are still small and immature. Sugar snap peas, on the other hand, also have edible pods, but are harvested when the peas are plump. But don't wait too long because overly mature peas will get starchy. One of my favorite varieties for our cool season dinner side dishes is Oregon Sugar Pod 2 peas. Mammoth melting sugar snow peas are also tasty. You can plant these in late winter as well, but any heat spikes just might set back that plant. Good sugar snap pea varieties include Super Sugar Snap. Shelling pea varieties include Little Marvel and Tall Telephone. Speaking of tall, if you have tomato cages, use those to trellis all these pea plants, which can get five or six feet tall. Just like all gardening is local, all lettuce is local as well. And by that I mean that not all lettuce can take our warmer valley temperatures. Head lettuce varieties especially, such as iceberg, are better suited for growing in milder coastal climates. Here in the Central Valley and in the low foothills, stick with the loose leaf varieties of lettuce, such as salad bowl, oak leaf, green ice. Even the reddish leaf varieties are good too, like red sails and ruby. Space these plants about four to six inches apart. Harvest loose leaf types when they reach full size. Use the older outer leaves, which contain the highest levels of calcium first. Correctly trimmed, lettuce stores reasonably well in most refrigerators. Lettuce will keep about two weeks in the refrigerator. It'll last longer though when you harvest it when the plant is dry. Do it early in the day when water content in the plants are high. Remove outer leaves, but don't wash them. Place them in a plastic bag and store in a crisper drawer. Beets are primarily grown for their roots, which are most often dark red and globe shape. Some beet varieties are tubular in shape. Some are golden yellow in color or white or have concentric rings of red and white that look like a bullseye when they're sliced. The beet tops when young may also be harvested for greens, which are excellent in salads. The older foliage can be cooked too. Beets are usually direct seeded rather than starting indoors and then transplanted into the garden. Although considered a cool season crop to be planted from mid-August to early October for a late fall to early winter harvest, Sacramento County Master Gardener Gail Pothauer says they can also be planted from late February to early April for harvest in the late spring. Beets need good drainage, so raised beds or large containers may be best. The most important step in growing beets, it's to be thinning the new inch tall seedlings. Cutting out the weaker growing ones when they're about an inch tall is a good thing to do. When they're about four inches tall, thin the plants to stand in their final growing spot, and they should be about four inches apart. Those thinnings can, by the way, be used for greens in your salad. In the Central Valley, the best beet varieties are those that mature quickly in less than 60 days. Master Gardener Gail Pothauer and the other Master Gardeners who really like their beets say among the best varieties to try include Ruby Queen, Red Sangria, Detroit Dark Red, Golden, and Albino. 
Let's talk about potatoes. Are they roots or are they stems? Well, gardeners are gonna disagree on that distinction, but they do agree on one thing, growing potatoes at home, it's fun. The best white potato varieties to grow here in the valley include White Rose, Kennebec, Chieftain, Norgold Russet, Red Lasota, and many other specialty varieties. Whatever you do, do not use grocery store potatoes or even potatoes from your own garden as a source of seed as they may contain disease spores, a fungus that causes blight. Buy your seed potatoes from a nursery that displays a certified seed potato tag. There are two very good times here to be planting potatoes, August and September, then again from December through March. Before you plant any of the potatoes, cut them in one and a half to two ounce pieces. Make sure that each piece has at least one eye. Store the freshly cut pieces at room temperature for one to three days before planting. This allows the cut surfaces to dry and form a callus, which decreases rotting. To plant, drop the seed pieces into three inch deep furrows with the pieces spaced about six to 12 inches apart. Closer spacing will give you more, but smaller potatoes at harvest time. Fill in the furrow to ground level, leave until the potato plants emerge, and then cover with three more inches of soil, making furrows between the rows that are at least six inches deep. Potatoes are shallow rooted. They need light, frequent irrigations at least once a week during much of the growing season. Excessive irrigation, however, can cause rotting. If soil moisture conditions are alternately wet and dry, it can result in rough, knobby potatoes. Potatoes don't grow well in soils containing moderate or large amounts of clay. They really prefer sandy or loam soils, so you may want to consider large containers or a raised bed. When the plants are about four to six inches tall, be sure to keep soil over the potatoes to prevent their exposure to the sun, which can cause greening or scalding. Green potatoes, which is chlorophyll by the way, they taste bitter due to a poisonous alkaloid that's also in that potato now and should not be eaten. Harvest early potatoes when they're large enough to serve to family and guests. If you want to store potatoes for later use, leave them in the ground until the plant tops are dead or nearly so and the skin on the tubers is firm but not flaky. Then dig them up and store them in a cool, dark place. Radishes are easy to grow and they can be planted eight months out of the year here, September through April. The radish is a crisp, peppery root vegetable in the brassica family. Both radish roots and tops may be eaten. As you might imagine though, from that planting schedule, radishes don't really like our summer heat. In our valley climate, plant radishes where they'll receive some shade. For continuous supply, plant seeds in succession every two weeks during the growing season. Some small rooted varieties of radishes are ready in just a month or less from the day the seed goes in the ground. Direct seed radishes thinly and a half inch deep and plant them four to eight inches apart in rosed space, eight to 12 inches apart. And at this point, you might be saying, oh, wait, 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 wait a minute there. I've seen radish seeds, they're small. How do you get just one seed in the ground every four to eight inches? Put the seeds on a small plate and use a moistened chopstick to pick up one seed and then deposit it in the soil. Larger radish varieties that are typically planted in September and October are then allowed to mature during fall and winter. Larger winter varieties need more space than spring varieties, by the way, so thin those winter varieties to a further spacing. Some good varieties of radishes to try include the daikon radish, French breakfast, Easter egg, purple plum, and the gorgeous watermelon radishes. Although considered a cool season crop, carrots can be planted here eight months out of our 12 months, August through December and March through May. There are many more adaptable and colorful carrot varieties that you can grow at home than you could ever find at a grocery store. The shorter growing carrots are great for containers or heavier soils. That includes varieties such as Gourmet, Short and Sweet, Little Finger, Amstel, and Lady Finger. For shallow soils, you can try Danvers or Chanternay. If you have really deep soils or maybe you're planting in raised beds, try the longer carrot variety such as Imperator or Danvers. Seeds, they germinate best under cool, moist conditions in sun to part shade. 
Use or prepare the soil that is deep and loose to avoid misshapen roots. Thin so that the carrot roots are one to two inches apart in the row. They're ready to harvest about 90 days after seeding, but they'll continue to grow and enlarge afterwards. So you want to harvest them when the roots are of good size, but still tender. If carrots are left too long in the soil or are allowed to overmature, the roots become tough, woody, and they just might crack. And here's a tip for planting those tiny, tiny carrot seeds. Use moistened chopsticks, which will pick up only a couple of seeds at a time. Now, I know that some of you find it easy to ignore growing cool season vegetables when the weather gets kind of iffy. I understand that. You don't want to feed your family fresh, healthy, homegrown food for six months or so. Well, could you at least feed your soil? Use the fall and winter months to replenish the soil nutrients in your garden with cover crops. It's easy, fun, beautiful, and also keeps the beneficial insects around your yard. Plus, it can be inexpensive, much cheaper than buying fertilizer. Cover crops add nitrogen and organic matter to the soil. Cover crops can also improve water penetration. How about planting an edible cover crop in early fall? Fava beans with its white and crimson flowers, mustard greens, which are edible, and its late winter yellow flowers attract the bees on warm days. Other cover crops to plant in the weeks ahead to feed your soil? There's plenty. Vetch, clover, bell beans, and peas. And if you don't want to plant a cover crop, just add mulch to the top of your garden bed. Shovel on compost, worm castings, shredded tree leaves, especially oak leaves, as well as chipped and shredded tree branches. Now, don't mix that mulch into the soil. Just lay it on top, three inches or more of it, and let the rains percolate the nutrients from the mulch into the soil. And if it doesn't rain, well, you may want to water it by hand once a week. Do you want more information about cover crops and mulch? Check out the Sacramento County Master Gardener website. It's sacmg.ucanr.edu and visit their Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube pages as well. And I just bet you'll find a lot of useful stuff at FarmerFred.com or maybe listen to the Garden Basics with Farmer Fred podcast. Can I say that? Well, I just did. Have fun gardening, and I hope to see you all here in person next year for Harvest Day. Thanks for joining us, Sacramento County Master Gardener's YouTube channel.